Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do a quick uh, sort of update review on my Leatherman Charge Plus. So I've had this for about six months now, I think. You can go back and uh, see when I first got it. I did a video unboxing it, but I think it was about um, February when I got this. So somewhere around six months uh and i absolutely love this tool it's my favorite non knife sort of uh tool that i have i guess my favorite multi-tool whatever you want to call it uh but it is yes uh fantastic it's a go-to i keep it in this leatherman leather case i believe this is the medium size case and it pops right in here perfectly closes up just feels a little nicer than having those nylon cases i recently got a um goat tools multi-tool and I, I really don't like that thing check my videos out i'll link them up here at some point excuse me at some point during the video but me and that that uh multi-tool are just not getting along it's it's uh sitting in the drawer downstairs it'll you know it'll be a tool that i'll have around the house and hopefully it'll come in handy at some point i don't know but um, this is my go-to multi-tool. I really uh, love this thing. It does everything I need. It doesn't have tons of bells and whistles or anything. But functionally, it's just been fantastic. Now, I don't use every tool on it, so we'll talk about that. But uh, I just wanted to show you the leather case. I love the leather case. I'll link these down below on uh, Amazon. I'll try to link this as well. I believe this version of the Charge Plus is sold out. Um, I'm not sure if Leatherman has it directly on their website, but I got this on Amazon, actually. It was 150 bucks, so it was not cheap. But I would spend that money again. Um, you know, this is my favorite multi-tool. I tried a few when I got into them earlier this year, I bought a few different ones, and this is just a clear winner for me. Um, it's got a nice compact size. It doesn't weigh a ton. It's like seven ounces. It's like an ounce lighter than the uh, normal Charge Plus because of the G10 scales, and that's what really drew me to this. It's so much more comfortable than a standard metal um, or steel framed uh, multi-tool. Now they do have the Charge Plus in titanium. I think it's called the Charge Plus TTI. And that one seems pretty cool as well. I believe that one's gonna be around eight ounces uh, because it has the titanium you know, covers um, over the steel, right? I don't think the whole thing is titanium, but I could be wrong. Um, but I love that this is a little lighter weight because that's always kind of an issue with multi-tools. Now, um, this sits at my desk. So if you guys have watched the channel long enough, you'll know that I uh, uh, I work from home, basically. I work on the computer. I'm not a handyman. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not, you know, a plumber. I don't do any of those things. So this is really um, just a DIY sort of homeowner style tool for me. So I'm not doing anything crazy. Um, so I want to put that out there so you guys know my use case is not heavy duty stuff right now if i was a carpenter or i was a plumber or whatever i would have dedicated tools uh for that job and knowing me i would have way too many <laughs> and i would have the best shit you could get um i've gone on a bit of a tool binge lately i might show some of it on the channel coming up I'm not sure i've kind of gone down a milwaukee rabbit hole and i've got a bunch of drills and drivers and shit that I don't really need but I'm hoping maybe I will at some point we'll see um, but I've kind of gotten hooked on uh, tools lately um, so you may see some stuff from me on that but I don't know because I don't have experience really and I'm not like using them as a professional I don't know if it makes sense but we'll see let me know in the comments if you want to see that um but yeah so anyway uh i've used this basically to help me during knife disassemblies that's the majority of what it's helped me with and then i've used it for some stuff around the house as well uh, it has the sort of standard needle nosy pliers from leatherman i like this versus the sort of flat more um 
just regular plier head because usually when I need this, it's to like grab something and tug it out, like grab the end of a nail and yank it out or, you know, something that's stuck. Uh, and if I need to really bear down, I can get in here with these larger jaws right here and use, I'm not using this as a wrench to like, you know, undo bolts or anything like that. So I like the way these are set up, but I know some people like the other style. They're very well, um, done i mean they're they come together really nicely and they snap really good there's no like defects that i can see here the teeth come together really well it's nice i have not had to use the cutters i don't believe at all so not too worried about those um it is a manual um plier that's the one thing i don't love about this tool and leatherman in general once you get to their sort of higher end tools they tend to be manual and not spring assisted and i actually like spring assisted pliers because it's easier to one hand now you can kind of you know use your finger as a spring it's not the end of the world but i think you can get more power down with a uh, non-spring version and that's why they do that i think and maybe because they have to build in some kind of spring mechanism I'm not positive why but um the functionality has been absolutely flawless on this product um comparing it to that goat tools multi-tool man it is night and day this thing just feels solid as hell and i absolutely love it now on the outside here we have four tools we have our main blade and uh being that this is sort of a premium version of this it came with an s30v blade now that blade was not really sharp out of the box i think it had a burr on it i knocked that off with a ceramic stone took about two passes or whatever watch the video and this thing is very sharp now i have barely ever used this blade why is that well i review pocket knives i have pocket knives um designed and sold um, that made no sense. I design with my partner, Colin, pocket knives and sell them. So I have a pocket knife company uh, and I review them. I have, I'm a collector of pocket knives. If you're watching this channel, you probably know this, but um, that is why I have never really used that blade. Um, I always have a knife in my pocket, dedicated tool in that sense, right? So don't really need it, but it's nice that it's there. And I got to say... Again, on a multi-tool, this is the best blade uh, action or whatever you want to call it I've ever had. Most multi-tools are dog shit when it comes to engaging these tools, but Leatherman crushed it on this. It has phosphor bronze washers on each side. You'll see it on all four of these tools. Um, well, I'm not positive on this one, but I think so. Um, you just can't see them. Yeah, there they are. Um, so it's really nice. And as a lefty, I can actually reverse flick this really easily. I mean, it's not even hard. Um, it used to be a little tough when I first got it, but it's literally just a flick and it pops right out. Um, there's a little bit of play up and down and side to side, but I think that's pretty natural with a build like this. But I don't feel like it's going to just fail on me or anything. Um, they have liner locks. They do come all the way over. I did confirm with leatherman that is by design so the scale here blocks it from going any further and so you have very solid lockup due to that um and i guess it makes it to where you have some resistance here there's a tiny detent ball thing right there but it doesn't provide much in terms of detent you can flick it very easily can't remember if i tuned these pivots at all when i got it but i don't think so it's really solid when i do this it's more the frame shaking than anything, um, but it feels really solid. The um, serrated blade over here, I can also flick out, have never used this. Also has a gut hook or a, a strap hook, whatever you wanna call it, have never used that either. Same kind of lock up here, same just smooth buttery action on this. Uh, and again, I guess you can't flick that one as easily. Let me try that again. Yeah, no, but left-handed reverse flick, no problem at all. And it's actually quite comfortable to, because of the G10, it's comfortable to hold these tools. Uh, I mean, this would, I could cut with this all day and not be uh, super uncomfortable. So that's really nice. 
And then we have um, a saw. So you have two tools that have kind of these hooks right here. So you just kind of grab them with your nail and pull up. You could probably walk it out if you really got on there, but you're supposed to just hook that, pull it out. And this is a saw. Very nicely done saw. I've used this one time. Um, my daughter's bed is one of those, it's, it, it was a crib, and then you could convert it to a toddler bed. And um, she was jumping on it, and I think my fat ass uh, was, you know, sat on it to read her books and stuff. And the front sort of piece that has the toddler sort of like, um, it kind of has like a little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a little fence area, a little gate area. It's not a gate, but it's so she can't roll out of the bed, right? And that's, that's the piece you remove from the crib, which is a full wall. And then it put that piece in so she can climb in, but she still has that rail, I guess you'd call it. And that piece down at the bottom, it snapped off uh, from probably me um, sitting in there and reading to her. And um, I had to go ahead and fix it, and uh, which was awesome because I got to use my tools. And I got to, you know, drill a hole and, and drive a new screw through there. And I fixed it. But I had a piece of the um, the piece of wood was kind of like sitting off, and it was it could be dangerous if she hit it or something. So I took the piece off and I sawed through it with this, and it worked absolutely perfectly. But that is the one time I used that. Um, those are the tools on the outside, and I just love how quick access you have to these. Um, a lot of people I think would prefer to have some small tools out here. I don't, I think this is perfectly fine. So I enjoy that. Now for the small tools, you open it up and um, you have this guy right here, sort of your can opener. Um, and then there's obviously a ruler on both sides here along the sides. Um, at this point, you can just use your phone as a ruler. I don't know why you'd need that, but never used this can opener. Um, the driver right here, I also have probably used one time. Um, what I do like is that you can kind of close this up here and then you can either hold it like this, you can put it on almost any angle you need to. Um, you can close it and then use it however you need to. So it's really versatile in that sense. Now, at my desk, I have bit drivers, right? Uh, I take apart knives all the time and whatnot. So it really just I don't know, haven't really needed this. And then I also have a toolbox with like actual tools. So it doesn't come in too handy for me, but it's definitely cool to have. And it takes uh, Leatherman bits, which I do have a selection of. I bought them to make sure. This is the Phillips and then there's the flat on this side. Basically, they're just like flattened bits, but they still work uh, pretty well. My favorite part about this Leatherman tool is the locking system on the small tools down here it's just the best system i've ever seen um instead of having it be a slip joint or whatever it has a lock and you just push this down and close it and it locks in whichever tool you have out if you try to take two tools out you can do that it'll lock both tools up which is pretty cool and then you can close that down. Now there's not a ton of tools on this. That's, you know, the other thing is you don't get a million tools, but I think they give you uh, the best selection of tools. Um, so you have this guy and this guy over here. And then uh, you have this flathead slash sort of like pry bar tool over on this side. I have used that a couple times, I think you can see um, to just pry under something or use it as a, I've used it as a flathead in videos, actually. I know that. And then, uh, one of my favorite tools on this product is the, um, let me just double check. Yeah, it locks up. One of my favorite tools is this micro driver. So this is a bit driver, just like the one on the other side, except this takes these micro bits. So I have a, a good number of these. I bought them from the Leatherman website and it's literally just a mini flathead and then you have a mini Phillips. So it's basically your glasses um, disassembly type kit. Um, and I love that they include this. So basically you slide it in here. Let me get it going here. I don't know why it's being weird. There you go. And uh, it sits in there with a spring. So it's not actually like locked in. I can pull it right out, but you'll see it's pushing that spring back just a little bit and that keeps it in place 
and I've never had an issue with it coming out or whatever. And you can use this to do surgery on your glasses. You can use it to um, take apart. I've used it on fidgets that have really small screw heads. The downside to this is it's either just so small that they wear out real easily or they use absolute dog shit steel on these because uh, you have to replace them after like one use. I do tend to be heavy on, uh, when it comes to bits and stuff, I'm very heavy on tightening down. I like to make sure things are really tight and that can be a detriment with smaller heads like that. I can mess stuff up. So it could be just a me thing. But I use this, I've used that a ton since I've had this. Then you have the scissors. And this by far is the worst tool on here. I have never used these and will never use these. Um, I, man, there's nothing more that I would want on a Leatherman than an absolute beast set of scissors. I do like how they fold up like this and then you can drop them down like that. Um, but they are atrocious. They're so small and, you know, I haven't really cut anything with them, so I can't say how bad they are at cutting, but they're just so small. Uh, if you look at my next tool video, I have the next tool flagship pro is another multi tool I have. Now it does sacrifice a lot of other tools to have the perfect scissors on it, but it has the perfect scissors. You know, um, if I could keep just the driver, like the mini driver, the regular driver, a flathead, like the pry bar type thing, and then have my outside tools, I would trade everything else in here, which was what, like two things. I would trade those for uh, the better scissors. Now, I don't know how they would incorporate it because it has to fold down and everything, but check out that next tool video. It's really cool. This whole arm comes out. Um, if you're looking for a multi-tool with an excellent pair of scissors, the next tool flagship pro or mini is the way to go on that. But there you go. That's a look at my Leatherman charge plus, uh, again, I've used certain tools a lot. Oh, the file. Um, sorry, I didn't talk about the file. I talked about the, the saw. This is one of my most used tools on here. I love that. I have this diamond coated file on here. Super important to me that this had the diamond coating. Um, I just used it today in a video to uh knock down the edges on my uh cwf uh flashlight on this sort of zirkutai clip on the edges here it tends to be really sharp and it's nice to just have a tool that I can knock, why am I talking like that? Knock these edges down on. Um, I want to do it again because I think I scratched my kid tonight with it. <laughs> Tends to happen where she'll be like rubbing up against uh, my leg or whatever, climbing on me or something. That sounded wrong. Climbing on me or whatever. And then um, she'll scratch herself. And, you know, it's a little annoying that that can happen with, my flashlight clip. So it's just nice to have this uh, file here. I should just use the rough side for a second. See, sometimes it just feels too rough, but. Yeah, see, that's nice and smooth now. Definitely beat it up, but it's nice and smooth. Very much smoother now on the corners there. But I've used this a ton, uh, specifically on knives, on lock bars. So um, a lot of times when you have lock stick, especially it's mostly on a liner lock. You don't want to do it with titanium. On a steel liner lock, you might have a, some lock stick. And usually it's because the geometry is just a little bit off. So I'll take the uh, file here and I'll just grind down the uh, coating on a lock bar. And what I mean, sorry, is the uh, it's like usually on a black coated liner. Um, so let's say you get a knife that has a black coated liner. Um, that coating is usually the, the, the problem, why it has a little bit of lock stick. Um, so again, it's not every knife, not every liner lock, it's just ones that have a black coated liner. So usually a blacked out knife. Um, 
And if you just take that coating layer off, it usually gets rid of the lock stick. And that'll, that'll happen naturally if you just keep carrying that knife and flicking it and using it. Um, it'll usually break in and that coating will sort of just wear off and then you'll get the the smoother lockup. But I like to kind of push that along by just taking the file and filing that off. I don't recommend people start, you know, messing with their lockup on a knife um, willy nilly, but I usually risk it. I'm not too worried about it. If it's a steel liner like that, it's usually not a super expensive knife. Um, and it usually works. I mean, it almost always makes it better. Now you don't ever want to do that on titanium because you're going to rub off the carbonizing and then you're going to have worse lock stick. So just make sure you know what you're doing and probably just don't do that off of my recommendation. But anyway, the file comes in handy a lot. Um, I've used this, uh, sorry, I've used the file a bunch since I've had it. Uh, I didn't know how much I actually needed it until I got this tool and had it available to me. Um, so between the pliers, the file, um, and the, the little micro driver, um, I'd say I use this quite often, but it's not like every single day or whatever. I probably use it a couple times a month for stuff like that. Um, and then occasionally around the house. So, you know, I probably could have gotten away with a Leatherman wave or something more affordable to have around. Um, but you guys know me, I like to be a little bougie and that G10 just really spoke to me. So I went with this one and I do not regret it. It's one of my favorite purchases this year is this Leatherman Charge Plus. So um, I hope that uh, gives you a little idea of what I think about the Charge Plus that I've had now for six months. And maybe I'll try to do another follow up later down the line but let me know what your favorite leatherman tool is or your favorite multi-tool is which one do you reach for the most and why and uh yeah i love you guys i'll try to link what i can down below on this the case for sure and i'll link the different charge pluses that i can find i just don't know if this one in particular is available because it was actually an exclusive to rei or it was an exclusive to some store uh, I don't know why they were later available from Leatherman through Amazon, but I got one and I'm stoked that I did because it's my favorite finish I've ever had on a multi-tool. I hate that heavy steel feeling. Uh, when you're trying to use a blade or a file or something, having this comfortable grip is really nice. So anyway, I'll shut up. I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you later.